Hello everybody, I'm George Runkel with RunCon and we're going to talk about shipping container engineering today. Now I've already talked about this briefly before but we're going to go ahead through it a little bit more in detail. We have a shipping container here. This is a representation and uh, sketch up of a 40 foot shipping container. You notice we have here the bottom side rail bottom side rail is rather thin. It's about six inches or 158 millimeters high. And uh, then we have above it the corrugations and then we have what's called the top rail which is a square tube 60 by 60 millimeters which is about a little bit over two inches by two inches. All right, Now this configuration makes for a very strong container I'll demonstrate it use in my ruler. I got a steel ruler, very thin steel. And if I run this in the vertical direction, it makes it very stiff. I can't bend it with my hands. Now what happens if we take off those uh, corrugations here and we've just got our very thin bottom rail. It's pretty much an analogy of this ruler. I can easily bend it with my fingers. Same ruler same amount of steel in this case in this case on the shipping container we've got much less steel but we lose a lot of strength by the shrinking depth of that so what do we do how do we make it stronger because i can't get away with telling an architect okay mr architect can't take the sides off the shipping container you're going to have to make a house out of eight foot wide rooms with only one in entrance in at the door here and that's it. People have to figure it out. People have to live in their eight foot wide rooms and it's just too bad. I've never met an architect that would have accepted, would accept that. And uh, I do like to do business in this work. So I have to come up with a better solution. So what do I do? Well, here we go. Here's uh, some drawings. I've got a shipping container. It's an AutoCAD. Well, it's, here's our shipping container again. Now we're looking at a cutaway view. We've cut away the across the container and I've removed the corrugations on this side. Now how am I going to stiffen the container? Well, on a building, if it's multi-stories, the way I can do it is I can take a container that I've got here on the bottom, put it up underneath, and I can then take a C-channel Put it right underneath this top rail. Now you see this is good for stiffening, but you notice something here. I've got this gap in here that I got to fill. So what am I going to do here? Well, what I can do is I can fill it with just about anything. I can use wood. I can use steel. I tend to use wood, to be honest with you. It just seems to work better. And I'm going to go ahead and put this. Uh, as black so we can see this. Well, that didn't work. All right. Well, let's try to get this better. There we go. Okay, now you can see what we've done here. We've put in this uh, shimming here and uh, what I'll typically do is uh, we'll go ahead and hatch it here. There you go. So now we've got this shimmed so as this lower rail pushes down it'll transfer the load through this top rail into the C channel that's below here. Now this doesn't allow us to uh, span the whole 40 foot. The problem is is 40 foot's a very very long span and I can only put so deep of a ship of a C channel underneath of here. So we still have to put some columns in. Generally we've got to put two columns in somewhat evenly spaced and it works. All right now what if we don't have a container underneath? What do I do to stiffen it? Well, let's go ahead and take these containers out and I'll show you what we can do to stiffen it. 
just move all this stuff down. Now what I'm going to do here, go up here, deal, and we're going to go ahead and what we'll do, we can stiffen this bottom rail with a steel plate that we can weld to the rail. And by doing that, we've stiffened it. And we can calculate our change in our um, moment of inertia for all you engineer types. And again, that'll allow us to take quite a bit of the corrugations off not the whole 40 foot though. Uh, this is very useful for industrial applications where we've got to lift containers that are very heavily loaded that we've taken off corrugations and allow us to put them in place and carry the load while they're being moved. And uh, the other thing we can do if we're setting the container down on the ground is we can shim underneath of it to cut the span of our uh, lower bottom rail. Now the reason we have to put a shim here is because if you take a look at the connector that's on the side, this is our connector, our cast connector. If we take a look here, it leaves a gap at the bottom of our container. Why is that? Why don't they have a container without a gap? I know somebody's going to ask me that. Somebody will send me an email or call me up and say, the, well, why did they do that? And it's actually a pretty good question. And the reason is um, The reason is that we are going to get deflection and when we load the container up. That means this part bows down. Um, when we load the ship, a ship up or a rail car or whatever with containers and we start and these things are heavily loaded, this lower rail, even with the corrugations on top, it's going to move down ever so much. The last thing you want it doing is to come down and we're going to go ahead and show you this here. I'm going to show you real quickly. We don't want it to deflect down and hit the container below. Because what it's going to do, let's say we had no gap here and this comes down under loading, it bows down and pushes down on here. Now and this container, let's say, is heavily loaded. That's going to increase the amount that this is going to be pushing down and deflecting. And if we're doing a stack of containers, which you're going to do on a ship, which is, I think the limit is eight, that starts to add up as you get down towards the bottom container. So the ISO standards require us to put a gap between the containers. They're, these are all very clearly described in the ISO standards as far as the dimensions of the containers. And that's great for merchant ships, rail cars, trucks, stacking these in a warehouse, but is something that we have to work around when we're doing our engineering. So anyway, this is a very quick explanation. I purposely didn't get into formulas and things like that. Um, if you're an engineer, you should be able to understand some simple formulas like getting your moment of inertia of this section once you've uh, stiffened it or figuring out how much deflection you can get out of this C channel that you're putting under here. If you can't, well, probably you shouldn't be designing with shipping containers. All right. So thank you for watching this video. If you like the video, please give it a like. Um, we're trying to get better with our channel here and uh, get better software and put in better production. And thank you for joining us today.